So, so, so you come across a job that requires Active Directory, DHCP, DNS, Microsoft ser ser Server type of experience, and you don't have any. You really want this job, but you don't have the experience. That, that, that's okay. Don't give up on that job. You can still learn this type of stuff and get this job that you want by setting up a computer lab and having hands-on experience like that. If nothing else, it will help you pass the interview to help you get that job. So let's 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 set up a computer lab. I will show you step by step. And not just that, we're going to talk 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 about some potential issues that you came across and we're going to troubleshoot them. So this is going to be very educational, very helpful, and it's going to give you that experience that you need so you can get those jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Koboman. Today we're going to learn how to install a lab that's going to teach you how to use many things that are required by today's IT jobs. They are virtual machines that act like a business type of environment. It's already set up for you. All you have to do is just install them on your computer. You don't have to do any difficult configuration, which saves a lot of time and also recreates a business type of environment that you can learn from. So this is where you would get your real experience, right? All right, let's get into it. So this is the link here. And if you need this link, you can let me know in the comment below and I'll gladly share the link with you. Also, I will put it as a first comment that is pinned by me. So look for the very first comment that's pinned by me. That's where the link will be as well. So let's get to it. We're going to click on the download link. Sorry about the jumping up and down. So I clicked on the download link and we're going to pick the first thing here. It says download lab environment. And then we're going to click again, download lab environment, which is a zip format. I don't know why they have it set up like this. It's confusing to begin with when it comes to description. What is it? What am I downloading? This and that. But it doesn't matter. We are downloading right now and the size of this is roughly 24 gigabytes, roughly 25 gigabytes on the disk when it's downloaded. So this is a zipped version of it and they are installed in Hyper-V. Now Hyper-V is part of Windows operating system. However, you do have to enable it. Now, before you use Hyper-V, make sure that you remove any other virtual machine software like Oracle, VirtualBox or anything like that. The reason is because you can't share extensions, hardware extension, meaning like a network, hard drive, all of these hardware extensions that are required by a virtual machine software that has to extend into it and take part control of it. So that way these virtual machines as part of the lab can function. So you can't have two software that is acting like a virtual machine because then you can't have one and not, and not the other one. You can't share multiple resources, at least not for now. So how do we enable Hyper-V in your computer? Well, you have to go to Windows Features, turn Windows Features on or off. And once this comes up, we're going to have an option to select Hyper-V, which is right here in the middle. Right? And if we click the little add button, we can see what's installed. So I'm just going to select Hyper-V. And you can also select virtualization is disabled in the firmware. So while we are looking at this setting here for the services, the reason this other one is actually grayed out, and this is very important, that means that virtualization service is not enabled. So this hypervisor stuff, that means you have to go to your BIOS and enable that setting for your CPU. So you have to go to BIOS and enable virtualization. Now it might be called something else on your computer, but make sure to enable any virtual stuff when it comes to emulation inside of your BIOS. Let me know if you have any questions in regards to this in the comment below and I'll certainly assist you with that. So we're going to select Hyper-V and I'm actually going to go ahead and remove IE while I'm at it. This is a fresh install of Windows 10 and IE is no longer supported. So I'm going to remove IE while I'm at it, but I'm going to make sure that Hyper-V is installed. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to minimize our background, which, which has Edge browser that is running, that it's downloading our new virtual lab kit. And I want to show you that this is as simple as this when it comes to Hyper-V. Once we reboot the computer, Hyper-V is going to be enabled, and then we're going to be able to install our virtual machines, virtual labs. So this, let's see, what's our status on the download? Eh, around six minutes, maybe six to seven minutes left. We've downloaded eight gigabytes as I was talking and the other 
you know, 12 or 13 or 14 or 15 <laughs> will be downloaded soon. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in like six minutes. Oh, so I nearly forgot to mention this and we're almost done with our download. If you scroll down, it's worth mentioning and I apologize if I haven't said this earlier. I don't think I did. But the requirements to run this is actually quite hefty. But we're going to try it on my computer that has a combination of these things. But the requirements are 150 gigabytes of free disk space to install all of this. Because keep in mind, we're installing like six or seven different virtual machines at once because it's a lab, right? And then we need a fast, fast, fast disk, I should say. So a disk that is like a magnetic old type of you know, like a 7200 RPM, 5400 RPM disk drives that are magnetic, that have the disk spinning, they're not going to be fast enough to run these things. So if your computer has a solid state drive, that is probably the best way to go about it. Otherwise, it's, you're just going to have a rough time of running any of these. And it says here, 16 gigabytes of available memory, 32 gigabytes recommended. And then it says high end processor for fast processing. Now, I have kind of half of this, <laughs> so we should we shall see if this is going to run properly. I have made videos to uh, run running these labs, and I've created a bunch of videos, training videos for this specifically, and I ran it on my you know high end computer that has all of this. This computer, however, is something closer to what people might have, so I'm actually kind of taking a chance to see if this will even work on this. But let me show you what I have. And I only have <laughs> four gigabytes of RAM on this computer, right? However, uh, I do have an i7 CPU, which is four cores and eight processing threads, which should help it. But I do also have solid state drives and I do have one hard drive, just a magnetic one. This is just for storage. I'm not going to use this, but I'm going to use this one here. And hopefully it's big enough. It's only 120 gigabytes. But hopefully it lets me install everything on it and it's just an old solid state drive that i've just put into this machine but it is an older samsung solid state drive so hopefully that works wish me luck otherwise this is going to be a waste of time for me and you <laughs> but we'll certainly try okay it's downloaded i think it's downloaded about six seconds left once this done i still have to reboot for the hyper uh, for Hyper-V to be installed and then we're going to get back to this. All right, I'm going to reboot and be back in a second. All right, reboot has, com has commenced and this should be really fast because it's a fresh installed of fresh install of Windows 10 OS. Wow, that was that's actually really quick. So I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful this works. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. So here is our downloaded lab. So we're going to right click and then extract all. Right, we're going to extract all. I'm going to extract it in the same folder and nowhere else. But when we install everything, I'm going to try to put it on that standalone 120 gigabyte hard drive. And yes, this lab will take that take up that much space because we are running tons of virtual machines. So it's going to be hefty. Slightly concerned with the RAM. I don't. I don't know four gigabytes of RAM. I should be able to run at least one instance at a time. But I recommend that you have at least eight gigabytes so you can run two to three, two to three virtual machines so you can follow along with the videos that I've already made. If you if you don't, can't find them, I'll put a link right now. It's going to come up in the right hand side or the right corner right around here. It's going to be a pop up. It's going to take you to the crash course that talks about Active Directory, DHCP, DNS and something else i forget what else it's 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 been like a month since i've made that so the point of this is so that you can practice and get real experience so that way you can get these types of jobs after this is unzipped we're going to go through the setup and there is a couple of more steps that need to be taken care of so i highly suggest that you keep watching this because if you miss these steps it's not going to work so it's very important that you watch the whole thing I just want to show you before this finishes that Hyper-V is installed. So if I click on here, you can see the Hyper-V manager is here. Right now, there is nothing here. But once we set up everything, you're going to see a bunch of virtual machines show up right there. All right. So it's unzipped now and available for us to run the setup. 
and you can see on the disk size it's about 25 gigabytes and here are is here is our setup.exe and it's very simple you just have to make sure you run it as administrator I'm already logged in as admin, so I'm just gonna double click on it. Now, this is interesting because this is Microsoft provided, but Microsoft Defender Smart Scan prevented an unrecognized app from starting. <laughs> but this is uh, Microsoft provided. So let me just show you this again. I'm gonna double click it. Watch this. So the one way to get around this is to click more info and run anyway, since we know. <laughs> That's funny, I just find that hilarious. You know, I've, I've installed this a couple of times already and I've never seen that come up. Never, never. And look, it's Microsoft product, but they don't recognize it. Go figure. Anyways, we're going to click next. So the next, when I click next, there's going to be one thing that we have to set up. Well, after we agree to this, I'm going to click next. By the way, this is a 90 day evaluation, 90 day evaluation. So we have 90 days to use this. It's plenty of time for you to learn. Now, here we go. This is airing out. I'm going to cancel out of this. We go back to turn Windows features on or off. Okay, so normally that should be like a check mark. All right, all right. Let's make sure that here we go. Hyper-V services. So I'm going to install this real quick. Sorry about that. Uh, normally, if you just do a check mark, it should be fine. But if you have any issues, now you know how to fix it. So I'm going to apply these changes and we're going to have to reboot one more time. Sorry. We're back. We have rebooted. I'm going to open up Hyper-V this time. So we're going to go to Action again, Virtual Switch Manager, and it's going to let us do it now. So it's going to be the very first thing up, hop, up top here where it says New Virtual Network Switch. And that's what it was looking for when it was stuck like that. And make sure you select External, and we're going to create a virtual network. And I'm just going to, you can name it whatever you want, but I'm just going to leave it at New Virtual Switch. Leave everything as default. Select Apply, and then OK. I wonder if I'll have to reboot one more time. It's, it's these extensions that are, here we go. So it disconnected my, uh, which makes sense. Uh, it disconnected my remote desktop session that I was using to connect to this computer. This computer is literally just sitting, is sitting next to a network modem, which has the router capability. So it's there, okay? So that's what it did that. It just had to disconnect me for a moment and bring me back up. But now we have the virtual switch enabled. So I'm going to close this now. And now the setup should continue. <laughs> it's good to learn always, right? So in case you come up with this, in case you have this problem, now you know how to fix it. And it's a good thing in, in one hand, on one hand that it came up. So that way, if it didn't and you happen to get that problem yourself, then you wouldn't be able to install this. And here it is. Now it's ready to be provisioned. So I'm just going to click next. It says it takes about 20 minutes. Uh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I wanted to point it to something else. Hold on. Just a moment. I think it's going to want to install it. So you try to install it locally there. That's not where I wanted. I'm going to do cut. So make sure you move the files to the disk that you want to use for this. So I am going to use it to my virtual machine disk that I have dedicated for it. I'm going to do copy pasta on it. It's just me being trying to be funny. It's copy paste, right? And uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind. It's going to install the virtual machines within the folder where you extracted it at. So make sure that you have enough space inside of that folder slash inside of that drive. So I'm going to go back here and just show you where it tried to install. It tried to do it within the extracted one because remember we didn't have this here right all right so everything is installed now this is what we have inside of our installation drive or installation folder if you will so here we are here are all the files all the virtual disk in regards to the virtual machines that we've installed so everything is there now so and all we have to do now is open up Hyper-V so I'm gonna open up Hyper-V manager I'm gonna run it as administrator and the reason for that is very important if you are not logged in as administrator it's just gonna come up blank otherwise you won't you know you won't, you won't be able to see any of these virtual machines that were installed so if you don't run it as administrator then this will be blank all right so here they are, they're all installed. And I suspect some of these may not work because again, I don't have enough RAM to run multiple ones, 
but let's just start random one here i'm gonna try it this the main controller as it's one of the most important things in my opinion here of course it's important to make sure that your other machines your client machines work so that way you can follow along so the reason we saw that blue screen here is because i actually tested it a little bit earlier uh, just to make sure it's just that i didn't record it i forgot to record the press the record button if you will now but you know because it took like you know 20 minutes to install everything here so i had to stop recording anyways it's coming up here and uh, it should load it um, as normal so again, I know I've said this before, if you're going to follow along to learn how to use all of these virtual machines and what they do and examples of what you need to know when it comes to learning about this stuff so that you have experience on, then please follow my videos that I've made. I've made quite a few really good videos. They are in series, but I also have a crash course that will show you the demonstration on how to use all of this type of stuff. Of course, I'll be making more videos on this. I, you know, uh, next one, I really want to talk about printing and I can certainly talk about printing and I did, but I want to show how it's set up when it comes to network printer and how it's used in a business environment. And for that, honestly, I have to buy a network printer for home, you know, cause I can't record this type of stuff at work. Right? So I'm looking to actually buy a printer that is uh, affordable because I, I don't need to use it. I would just have to spend money to buy it so that way I can just make the video that's they'll be the only reason and those network printers are really really expensive unless I find like a second hand one and hopefully it works that type of stuff so it's not easy to do that so here is the login and the password for this is password but it's spelled capital P at sign SSW zero RD so once you hit enter it's going to load up everything Sorry, the, the window just keeps maximizing and minimizing and all kinds of stuff. All right, all right. Here it is. Here is our domain controller. Let's see what we have in here. Here is our admin tools. Here is our actor directory, DHCP, DNS, and everything else that you might need when it comes to learning that type of stuff. So yeah. That would be it for this video. I hope you find this video educational. And yeah, I mean, the better computer you have, the more RAM you have, the better you're gonna be off and the higher chance of you actually being able to use this type of stuff without any problems. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. You can pull up all this stuff on your own afterwards, play around, log into it, and just learn and learn and learn and hopefully succeed in your career. All right. You have a wonderful day. Please share these videos with your friends and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.